and we will put our hands together as I call them up. We have Pastor Godwin Ati. Please, can you come forward? Praise the Lord. Pastor Adegoku. Pastor Wale Davis. Brother Michael Ajay, please. We have Sister Omo, Sister Omo, Omo Nye. Sister Beatrice Agri. Sister Grace Abarak. We have Sister Rosemary. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God we have this uh, wonderful panel here, and we want to give you the opportunity, please, if you have any questions relevant to the topic that we just discussed this morning, we'll be more than happy to address those questions. Who has a question in the audience, online? If you have any questions, please. So our pastors and uh, the wives who are, have been with us here since Friday, uh, maybe there are questions that you also want to ask when it comes to your church and the things that the Lord has taught us all through this weekend, please also feel free to ask your questions. So it's not just the members, but pastors and wives, please, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. Is yes. Uh, we have one hand over there. Please, can we give? Please tell us your name and then ask your question. Lord. Uh, 
thank of the Lord for that great question because it is very important that when we have a meeting like this and something that can help us in the work that the Lord has called us on to uh, it is very very important that we step up on time and begin something uh, the, what I can say which I do not have the final authority here uh, what I can say is that when something comes to us like this as a group and we happen to come from different locations uh, the first thing we want to do is to start from within ourselves what can I do uh, so that I can implement what I have learned. So I will want to suggest that we begin with ourselves in individually and as a location, waiting for the time when there's going to be a universal plan by the church leadership. But since the church leadership, God led him to put this thing in place for us. I sincerely believe that there is something already going on in the plan. And therefore, it will not be long that we are going to see the implementation of these things that have been put in place. I do not know if I have answered your questions, but I know that there are others that may want to contribute, and the leadership also. Yes, I believe that uh, our regional overseer did uh, address that aspect and some names where uh, some people were assigned responsibilities and uh, I believe in due course we'll be getting uh, a feedback with regards to that. Alright, do we have any other questions from the audience? Okay, I see a hand up. Okay, good morning. Uh, this morning we talked about the evolving church and of course we talked about the internet the i mean bringing the church in the outer space in, in the uh, in the internet world so that people can listen now uh, in a physical church like this as we are here like this it's not really it's not going to be uh, much possible or for people that are, let's say people that are going to strip clubs to enter the church physically like this. It's not really much possible. But on the internet, you will see, you post your video, your church video there, and you will see pornography there on the internet. So how can we, uh, how, can we how, how can we separate it in such a way that somebody is watching your video on the internet and there is a pornographic video by the side there. Yeah. So how can we, how, how are we able to uh, kind of um, separate it so that somebody, like somebody is watching a message on YouTube, there's pornography by the side. So I, I've, I've, I've looked at this for, for a long time. How are we going to be able to separate it so that All right. Thank you so this much. is not going to happen? All right. We, I think we got a question. That's the one that this Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are going into the internet and uh, your mission there is a message, if you see anything that pop up that is not the message you are looking for, I think wisdom demands that you take it off. Because you really cannot partition your message on the internet from other posting on the internet. It is you that you be the policeman of yourself and you want to tell yourself that you are not here to look at pornography. Uh, I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In addition to that, uh, like a teacher who taught us this morning uh, made it clear that the, that's the more reason why as a church we have to uh, really 
go into, I mean, going online because the devil has invaded online. And because he has invaded, we need to counter that. We need to be offensive, we need to be aggressive. But then, as an individual, you know, we have a responsibility to guard our heart against everything that the enemy is throwing at us. Uh, our goal is to win souls. Our goal is to convert people to the Lord by his spirit. And uh, so the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And there are programs also that you can put in place on your own personal computer that can filter uh, those kind of unwanted uh, information online. And if I understand the ecosystem very well too, the ecosystem also would mean that if our messages are also online, people who go there for pornographic purpose, they can also stop all into our messages also, that can also caution them in the ecosystem, if I should understand this too. So that's the reason why our presence also should be there. I've realized something on the YouTube and all these channels that we are integrated in, in the system. There are sometimes it depends on what you watch on your on your phone. If you are always bringing something that is what I like, that's what they will be bringing to me for you. So you have to make sure that you don't have to be going to sites that they are not relevant for you. Make sure you go on sites which is good for you. And that will help you, they will not send you pornography. So you have to be very careful what you go and what you look for on the internet. Sorry, sir, if I may add uh, to that. I think the question is not about him. I think it was asking about um, people that are watching the message, but not about him. Um, so, so at, at Pastor, on that issue, uh, there's practically nothing you can do uh, because, like she said, there's a in algorithms, right? So the more things those people are watching, the more things they will send to them. So, but if we have our message, our message will counter those things that they are watching. So on, on their end, there's nothing we can do about that. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think we have done justice to that question. We are going to move on. Uh, I have, all right. I will, I will get to you, but let me read this question quickly. With the advent of Zoom, many of us or many of our members prefer to stay at home rather than coming to church. How do we break the cycle of complacency and get people engaged again? Stop where I want to go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, this is, um, is, is happening in virtually all our churches. And um, it's an unfortunate thing because uh, the Zoom is or was supposed to be a boost. It was supposed to be something during the pandemic that will allow us, despite the, not the restriction at that time, you know, and uh, we were able to meet together through Zoom to share the word of God and carry out our services. And now that things are easy enough, um, and we've been told by leaders that there is need for us to come back to the church. And if for any reason we should be on Zoom at this time, it had to also come from the leaders for one reason or the other like some of our meetings, uh, weekly meetings, some churches are still on Zoom and all that. And for those that are coming in, uh, in the church in person, 
for our members, I don't see the reason why we should still be there uh, on Zoom. Again, we should also know that even as we are involving, we should realize that the essence of involving is not about us. It's about the people we are reaching out. It's about the, the source of men outside. It's about those people that we may not get into our churches. So it's not about us to relax. It's not about members to now see it as an opportunity to now uh, sit at home and uh, uh, prefer to sit at home, not to come to the church. So it's something that needs discipline. It's something that commitment has to come in. It's something that we as members of the church need to look into because the Bible has told us that we should not forsake the coming together of one another. And I pray that God Almighty will help us that what is supposed to be a blessing to us will not be a, a barrier or a hindrance or a cause to us. And so we need to sit up back and uh, 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 be disciplined and return back to the churches for those that are in person. So it's about self-discipline. It's about commitment. It's about consecration. Praise the Lord. So they would want to follow. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for uh, technology. And um, it's been helping us. But at the same time, we also need to realize uh, the what you have been what all of us have been talking about since we came here. Uh, there is the foundation that we do not want to tamper with. There is the requirement we do not want to tamper with. And we know that foundationally, what God wants for us is to assemble together just like uh, my sister just uh, quoted to us here. But we do not, we, we cannot just go and pick people up and carry them to the physical church. Uh, the essence of the technology is to reach out to the people that have not come, re thinking that and believing God that eventually they will join us in the physical church. And that was why I love one of the uh, statements or one of the, 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 the statement that was made yesterday by the pastor that taught us about the ecosystem. He said, where we do not have churches, we can reach out to them there through technology, and then when we have enough people, we go there, we set up a physical building there for them to come. So, uh, we are not trying to replace the assembly of one another together with uh, Zoom. But at the same time, we are not going to be able to go carry people and bring them to the physical church. So what I can say is that we will need a lot of prayers that God will begin to touch the members, the heart of the members that still refuse to come to the physical church where there is no problem because we still do carry out all the businesses we are carrying out. As outside there, we go to the mall, we go to um, uh, to, the, to the place of work. We go to everywhere. So why is it that the church is not the problem because you find it convenient and comfortable to stay at home where are rush supposed to be in church? So what I think is that we really need to continue, the church needs to be gathering and be praying about those, for those people every time so that the Lord will touch their hand and they can join us in church. Why at the same time we are carrying out the business of reaching those that are not members through the technology that we have planned this weekend. Thank you, Mr. Praise the Lord. Because of our time, we have more questions and we're going to move on. Uh, again, leaders, pastors, you have to be involved. You have members who are sitting back at home. They probably need your visitation and go there and encourage them. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
uh, I have some set of questions here. I will read them off. How can we make our online preaching to be effective and leading others to Christ? That's question number one. Uh, number two, how can how can one learn how to use this website, this course to preach the gospel? I need a list of them. Uh, I love, number three, I love Deeper Life. Although as a young adult, so this is coming from a young adult, I feel my pastor and location is not always willing to evolve because they are stuck on traditions. How do I go about trying to implement different uh, and new ideas that are not sinful in the church? Sister Beatrice. Very simple. Thank God for this internet. There's something that, that God has given to us as Christians to go out and bring the gospel. And we thank God for this internet. What I do is that most of the time, all the messages that we have, most of the on Sundays, I posted it to all my contacts, most of them. And even in Africa, everywhere they are, they send me feedback. Someone will be thanking me for the messages. So to preach the gospel is good on internet. So I'm saying that don't just relax that, say that, okay, I can, how can I do it? You have the phone, the phone is there. You can use it. It's very good to use it, to consent to your, all your contacts. That's my opinion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about the evolving church. And so the question that was asked, how can we make our preaching effective? Yesterday, by the grace of God, one of our pastors really, you know, did a very excellent and a great job in that teaching. So for ministers of the gospel that um, during services when they are, you know, preaching the word of God, there is a need for one to be well prepared, as we have been told. You need to be prepared, not, not when you know that tomorrow is Sunday, you need to preach the gospel, or you need to preach a message, and then today, Saturday, by 6 o'clock or early hours in the morning, that's when you start preparing message. A minister's life is a continual preparation. Every day you are preparing, you are praying, you are waiting upon the Lord, you are listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and in every situation, circumstances that you find yourself, God is giving you a message. And through that message, as a minister of God, you need to go back and do what, and do a, a preparation. You need to put, put those things down. When the Spirit of God is ministering to you, is speaking to you, and is giving you a message, you need to write it down. When you write it down, you need now to go back, sit down, spend quality time, and develop that message. When you sit down, spend quality time, develop the message, the Lord will give you more illumination, inspiration, and divine illustration for you to able to minister and communicate the word, the message of God to the people in an effective way. And you know that prayer, you cannot do that without prayer. After you have developed the message, the minister has to take the message to God and spread it before the presence of God and ask for God's divine anointing upon that message. When, when you finish praying, presenting to God, you need to step aside and let the Holy Ghost step in and take over the message. But when a minister does not step aside, you want to do it on your own, you find out that you are just giving the people letter. And we are told in the word of God, the letter killeth. But it is the spirit that do what? That giveth life. Praise the Lord. So personally, I think that's what ministers should do to effectively communicate the word of God. And at times, need, you need to practice. 
practice make perfect. Amen? If you are not really conversant with preaching, you are a new preacher, a new pastor, and you don't, you don't know how to, to preach, you know, how to position yourself, how to conduct, comport yourself, carry yourself when you are pre preaching. Because when you are preaching, you, it has, you have to preach with passion. The people have to see the passion in you. They have to see that you are carrying the message. You, a lot of things has to be involved for the people to be touched. So you have to practice. If you need to be stand before a mirror and preach your own sermon to yourself first. And when you do that, you will be able to see errors. Take videos of yourself. Let us go down, sit down and watch yourself. And then you can make correction when you are going to face the congregation of the people of God. And when you do that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will take over and the people's life will be touched transform and change and the people they will become more committed and more involved in it and they want to come back they want to hear your message time and time and time again praise thank you so much thank you all right um we'll go to the next question oh, yes. okay uh pastor what are they Praise the Lord. Uh, this is an uh, evolving program, and we have had a lot over the weekend that we cannot get talk with tradition. Uh, and with the, this information age, and we can see what our Father and the Lord is doing right now. Uh, before this time, you will see that uh, so many things that has happened in Lagos didn't happen before. And as long as it's not sinful, anything we can do to move the church forward, not committing sin, not changing the, the landmark, the, we are not putting a new gospel. The gospel has been of old. We carry all the doctrine and we analyze the doctrine and we preach the doctrine. And we innovate as we see, we were told this morning that uh, we must have vision and then there must be a revision. We look at what we are doing, that is tradition, that is not, is not doctrine. We take it out. We don't get talked with that. We want to follow the, the, the trends of the time because if we are going to go into the internet, I'm going to disseminate message there to the global world, uh, we need, number one, to really study and know what we are saying. If we are going to exegist, you are, you are talking Bible. And uh, anything that has nothing to do with a uh, Bible that we have gotten, I mean, we, we just talk on all over, I mean, over the year, we take it out and look at what can help us in this part of the world. Take, for instance, our Father and the Lord in 1993 in uh, Long Island University. He came there and he saw every one of us with turban in the head. And Baba said, why do we want to impose our culture on the people? He said, to put heart on the head, is it sinful? And the answer is no. So all those traditions, we take it out. In my church in Philadelphia, I don't want you to wear turban. Not all the time. You want to wear it one time, go. But you are wearing to ban all the time. The people are looking at you as if you are a Muslim from Iraq. And that doesn't work. You take that one out and look at how the people here can come to church and feel at home, feel comfortable. There's a way church can change people. You can't come to our church two, three times without it will change you. Because you see the people of God there, you see the sisters there, how they dress. Some of the time they say, okay, do you want me to come back? I say, come back, come as you are. It is the word of God, the Holy Spirit, that will clean us out. You see, we cannot do it by ourselves. Our mistake is somebody is coming, raw sinner from outside. We want him to, to be like us. It's not possible. He has to come in first, receive the word of God, the water of the word that will cleanse him from within. And when the Holy Spirit does that, the person is converted, the person is changed, and 
transformation has come upon that individual. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think it was the August uh, Global Crusade. I got a call from one of our leaders. And when he saw the flyer and uh, had EGS and Don Moen, and he wanted to find out, is this real? I said, yeah, sure, it's real. I said, the church is moving on. And it's better for you to join the moving train. You don't want to be left behind. The message remains the same. The methods will have to change. God bless you. We have another question here. To be an evolving church, uh, maybe some of these questions will. To be an evolving church, we need to be able to reach the masses. One of the biggest ways is through music. But how can we reach the masses when our music is not evolving? So many limitations on our instrumentation and that limits the audience, especially the audience we want to reach. The mandate is the same where Jesus only is our message. How come so much restrictions on vital things? Are we allowed to have other ministers from other churches minister at our church? If we begin something online or in order to preach the gospel, do we advertise or wait for, uh, wait for God to advertise us? That's that thing. The Bible said that the man keeps making ways for him. If you say we are restricting people to use our music, what do you mean? We have music. Our choir in our location, when they sing, I am blessed. So it depends on what that person understands by restricting people on our music. What do you mean? Maybe because you would not see this play band. So you, you have to be specific. If it is band you are talking about, we have instruments here that give melodies that lift up souls. Music is not about the body movement. Music is about preparing men's heart to receive the message. Tuning men's heart towards God. That's about music. So I don't think we are doing bad in our music, in our church. That's my understanding. So if the person is thinking about we are restricting people about music, I do not believe that. When you're thinking about bringing people from outside, and I think like the young men who have been preaching to us this time, the one who preached about the ecosystem and the one who talked this morning, these are young men. So what are we looking for outside that we don't have inside? So to my understanding, we have enough men and women of God inside that we can make use of. But we also talk about collaboration. We are not restricting ourselves to our people alone. That's why we go outside to learn. Me, I go to seminar outside. So we invite people in from outside also. So we are not restricting our people to only our members here. We are learning from outside. We just talk about Don Moy. It's not, it's not from within, it's from outside. So we are not restricting people from coming from outside. But I think we have enough hand here that we can make use of. But if you have in need of inviting somebody from outside, it should be somebody who believe what we believe. We should not bring people in to corrupt what we have. I have invited people in and I discover later in their lives that these people that you think that they have power, you think that they are telling this testimony, some of those testimonies are not true. I later discover that. And so now I don't. So sometimes we, we are doing these things because of past experiences. So if the young ones who are coming and thinking that we are restricting people from coming from outside, maybe if you have somebody you want to invite, let your leader know. There are things your leader may know about that person you want to invite that you do not know. So please, when we do that, I think it will help us. So our young ones, please don't be afraid to let your leader know if you want to invite somebody who you believe has something to offer. Others can contribute to that. 
Our regional overseer wants to come in. Okay, praise the Lord. I just a quick uh, contribution to that. We need to understand that Abraham was able to succeed because the soldiers he used were those that were raised in his own household. Uh, David was able to succeed because the soldiers he, he worked with were those that he trained. Uh, if we're going to succeed as a church, we need to look inward and trust the ones that God has given unto us, people that went through what salvation is about, people that knows what consecration, dedication, devotion, holiness is about, not just people that you come and demonstrate on the stage and speak grammar and uh, just put words together and then they are gone without the real anointing of God. Many of the things we are counting on, on those people may not be real. We're not saying that they are not all real, but we are saying that if we have thousands of people within our church and we cannot see among them that is competent enough, then something is wrong with us. Then we have labored in vain all these many years. But I believe we have not labored in vain. Any gift or grace you are looking for out there, we have them in here. Let's tap into them and make the best use of them. And that's part of why you see that this pastor's meeting, you see a lot of young people, young adults getting involved, is because the church is evolving and we are going to places. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together, yes. We are going to places. All right. Uh, I know I saw a hand up there before I read it. Okay. I want to see your hand. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to make a comment and allow you to comment on it. But in the first place, I want to talk about the ecosystem. Uh, ecosystem having to do with one of the studies called global environment. That's where the word ecosystem comes in. Ecosystem is the interaction of living things, whether it is the plants and animals with non-living things. That's the ecosystem. Check your dictionary, go to anywhere. Interaction of animals and living things and non-living things together in the environment to have. Applying there, the brother was not wrong. Because we are living in an environment where living things are all around. We, human beings, bring that to apply in us and send it out. And we can do that. So the word ecosystem is about environment, interaction of living, non living things. But that's fine. The other thing that bothers me is since priority today, and I'm standing here, I'm crying. We're talking about evolving church. I think we misapplied that word. And I think about, I think about the brother that gave us talk about ecosystem. He mentioned something. Content. Content. A regional overseer has to do. Content. Content. What's about that? I want us to make us, I know that we have said that already. Let's make it plain between evolving church. Bible. So that people don't go away here with wrong. I know that you already said that. Evolving is not that you take the gospel, what he said. Christ already given a vision where you have to go. And he's given the power to do that work. What was evolving is we couldn't reach people in all over the world. What can we do to do this? Just not about the contents of the church. Content of scripture is that nothing, nobody can tamper with it. But this is a point. Content. I look at my study language is, is to look at what did the apostles did. You what did they do? Quick, okay, time. I say I wanted to make. I didn't want to ask a question. What did they do when the Holy Spirit came upon this people? They were not the same. Peter couldn't preach. From there, he started preaching, powerful, healing. Where are we? 
healing. I remember, General Vasi, I can remember, there was a time I came to his office. So many years, we cried. Yeah, one minute? Yes. I told him, if you were to go anywhere, what Christ did, he sent us out, preached the word, healed the sick, raised the dead. People will come from anywhere. A lot of people have problems. Science cannot solve, no matter how much we evolve. Let's do the main thing. I taught this organization, this meeting we came here, you roll on the floor if you like. Let the Holy Spirit come down. And people are delivered. Things will happen. Say the little word, the contents. Take that content, the power of the Holy Spirit that will raise the sick, that will make the blind see, that will heal the sick. People will come from any part of the world to hear. This is a meeting I came to attend. Thank you. Yes, Pastor Church. Well, it's a comment. Praise the Lord. A uh, I have a question. Yeah. I thank God for Dr. Warren. The time is coming. Amen? Um, I'm talking about the Ill elites here. And uh, a brother that was preaching the other day, I took some questions when he said he was crying that look at us here now in the church. You cannot see any the indigenous citizens in this country. Here it's only Africans migration coming to gather together. So our church is growing, and it's so painful that we're not doing anything. My question is: when we see these elites come to the church, they will come. Amen. Amen. When they come to the church, who do we assign to follow up with them? Because people come with different backgrounds. You see white, you see African Americans, you see foreigners, big men, they come to church. As a pastor in the church, who do you assign to follow up? Will you allow every day can talk, calling them in their house? And sometimes they might not understand their English, what they're talking about. Can you please tell us how to follow up with these people? Thank you so much. I am going to tie up your question with the one I have here because of our time. Uh, they're very much close. What strategies can we use to retain those who we successfully invited uh, and came to the church, you know, Zoom or Fiscal Church? And then what is the like stand on world religion, communism, whatever it is? Uh, why was Paul able to fulfill his God-given ministry than Peter? Was it because he preached the law and uh, Paul preached the gospel of grace? How can we preach the gospel that Paul preached? In what ways is deeper life evolving this time? Uh, as the recommendations we want to most to have to reach out or follow up with non-African or non-traditional communities. So we're going to tie up that question with this. Is that Grace you want to go? Praise the Lord. I, I want to go along with... Um, a comment of uh, Dr. Morin. Uh, we should not uh, lose sight on this evolving church. That the, one of our pastors was um, really came down yesterday on the need to reach out to the community where we are. There are a lot of people. The essence of evolving is to reach out to the world, to reach out to the souls of men is not to um, reorganize the house. It's not to reorganize the church. It's what can we do to advance the gospel? What can we do to reach out to those people, the drug addicts there, those that are in prison, those that are in the hospital? Those, there are people, these ones are limited. They cannot even come. How do we get there? The gays, the lesbians, all those people that are there. Jesus died for them. The evolving church is to get to all these people. How do we get to them? How do we um, um, get them saved? How do we get the gospel across to them? You know, it's not, we shouldn't lose the sight that um, it's, it's just inside we need to change our music, change our band, change this and change that. I don't think that is the evolving. The issue is how do we do that? And it takes the power of God. It takes the Holy Spirit. 
it takes the, the I tell you, by the time the, the power is moving, the anointing is moving, and signs and wonders are moving, people will come in. You don't even need to invite them. They will come. The others will tell them. When the, that's why, look at the, the, the program where the, the, the global crusade. Somebody is healed of cancer. Somebody is healed of COVID. Somebody is healed. People are trooping in. They are coming in because they, they know that, yes, the medical are helping us, but the medical don't have the absolute solution. So the evolving church is, can we repeat what happened in Los Angeles 1906 or 1907 or thereabout? Can we repeat the power that happened during the time of Smith Wigglesworth? Can we repeat those powers that happened that the shadow of Paul and Peter were healing the sick? That is what we need to do. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, we're going to have our regional overseer uh, comment at this time. But praise the Lord. And I think with this we close. Wisdom is a principal thing. With all that getting, get wisdom and get understanding also. If you are staying within the four corners of your church and you are expecting God to move, you will stay there until you are buried there. The Bible says, Go ye into all the world and do what? and preach the gospel we are talking about how can we reach the world if we are concentrated on how can we get healed alone you are missing it healing comes through obedience deliverance comes through obedience this sign shall follow them that believe if you are stagnant no sign will follow you it is when you keep moving you keep going go ye when you keep on going all the people you are making references to they went they went to minister to people they, jesus did not just stay one place expecting miracle to happen he went through the streets of galilee he went through capernaum the streets of jerusalem and as he was going things were happening let us understand what we are doing how do we move from where we are to where we need to be it is when we go bring the people in the miracle will follow the signs and wonders will follow and as we go ministering the one that is sick through the power of the gospel will be healed the one that is bound by the devil will be delivered and so let us understand that we need to change our mentality. Um, yes, within the church, we need to reorganize things. There is no doubt about that. That is the essence of innovation. We can't just keep doing things the same old way. We need to advance ourselves. We need to be sure that the way we communicate the message, we need to be sure that the method of communicating the message we need to look into the means of communicating the message. Yes, you have a good message, but your microphone is very bad. You are talking, nobody can hear you. And um, so we need to do all of those, but you don't preach to empty people. You preach to souls. How do you get there? Not by sitting down. You go out there. So we are saying, how do we evolve into getting online? minister to the people and bring them in how do we get into different forms of media strategies approaches to get the people to come into church not just the status quo as it was in the beginning so it is and so shall it be forevermore no god is not like that god is a moving god god is a progressive god god expects people his ministers that are going to be evolving. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you. That brings us to the end of this session. Let's put our hands together as we have our. Let's go back our seats now. Please, shall we?